according to the fictional mafia boss Don Corleone. Because a man who doesn't spend time with his family can never be a real man. So, what were these liars, thieves and killers like at home with their actual families? Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at a selection of photos of various mobsters in their home lives. Let's start with former Gambino family underboss Neil Delacroche. On the far right of this photo, we see Delacroche, the feared Gambino mobster, vacationing with friends and family in around 1970. On the left hand side of this photo, at the front of the speedboat, is Gambino mobster Joseph Joe the Cat Lafort. Joe the Cat was an extremely wealthy mobster who owned property all over Manhattan and Staten Island. Joseph Lafort is the man who actually owned the entire building that the Ravenite Social Club was based in. So technically, he was the real owner of the infamous social club that was made famous by Delacroach and later John Gotti. As I've covered in a previous video. Next up is a photo of powerful Chicago outfit gangster Anthony Spilotro, enjoying life in a swimming pool. Followed by a selection of photos of the feared mobster with his son Vincent. This second image is allegedly from Vincent's 10th birthday. And this photo from a few years later is at Vincent's high school graduation. On the left hand side of the picture is Anthony Spilotro's wife Nancy. Anthony Spilotro once clamped a man's head in a vice and squeezed it until his eye popped out. Anthony Spilotro and his brother Michael were both famously beaten to death in 1986. 30 years after his father's gruesome killing, his son Vincent would recall of his dad. You know, he just, he was just a man and got caught up in some things that maybe he shouldn't have. But he lived it the way he lived it. Sticking with Chicago, we have outfit heavyweight Anthony Joe Battazzicardo. Seen here on the wedding day of his daughter, Linda Lee, who was 20. She would marry a young man by the name of Michael Palermo, who was 22. In this next image, we can see a cardo doting on a young girl who is believed to be his granddaughter. In the following photo, we have the man that the press dubbed Big Tuna, alongside his wife Clarice and friends. And in this picture, we see the famous crime boss demonstrating his chef skills while cooking in the kitchen. Many books and documentaries often state that Anthony Accardo received the nickname Joe Batters after he beat mobsters Albert Anselmi and John Scalise to death with a baseball bat in 1929. However, this is in fact inaccurate and Albert Anselmi and John Scalise were not hit with a baseball bat at all. Although Anthony Accardo's use of a bat in his criminal life did lead to the name, but it wasn't from the murders of Scalise and Anselmi. As I have covered in a previous video, the link to this is in the comments below. Back to New York and a selection of home photos of the violent Bonanno family mobster Carmine Galante. Here we see Galante at home, potentially not long after his release from prison in 1939. We can ascertain from Galante's hairline that these photos were from before 1943. As in this 1943 mugshot, Galante has less hair. In this next photo, we see Carmine Galante showing a lighter side to him while he poses for a souvenir photo with his wife in a prop car whilst on vacation. Here, we see the greatly feared Bonanno mobster playing with his daughter, again with an almost ever-present cigar in his mouth. Followed by this image of Galante giving her a kiss. And then a rare photo of Carmine Galante skiing, 
potentially from his time in Canada, where he was overseeing the Bonanno family's narcotics network. Followed by another photo of Galante playing in the snow, and another with his wife on vacation at the beach. These family photos display a jovial and almost loving Galante, a far cry from the man who allegedly smashed glasses on a restaurant floor in Canada and then made a young waiter dance on the broken shards with his bare feet. In this next rarely seen image, we have Colombo family gangster John Sonny Francis in the parking lot of the New York Mets Shea Stadium in the 1960s. Some believe that the taller boy in the middle of the photo may be Sonny Francis' son, Michael, who would go on to become a captain in the Colombo family himself before leaving the life and becoming a successful author and YouTube personality. Over to the Genovese family and a few photos of vicious crime boss Vito Genovese spending time at his home. Firstly, seen here, relaxing in a chair. And in the following photo, Genovese is picking a suit jacket from out of his wardrobe. The next image shows Vito hanging a photo on the wall. We can speculate that this may well be a framed photo of his parents, Felice and Nunziata. We also have a picture of Vito Genovese on the wedding day to his first wife, Donata Ragone, in 1922. She would pass away in 1931 from a variation of tuberculosis. Next up is a picture of future Genovese family boss Vincent Cingiganti with his daughter Rita in the late 1960s. Followed by a photo of Rita Giganti with her father on her confirmation day. Her mother Olympia is on the left hand side of the photo. In the next image we have a young Vincent Giganti in the 1950s with his wife appearing to feed each other some cake. And then also a photo of the pair on their wedding day. Here is another photo of Giganti the family man, followed by a couple more with his much loved mother Yolanda. Amazingly in 1996, while Vincent Giganti was the serving boss of the Genovese crime family, a thief by the name of Willie King snatched the purse of Yolanda Giganti, the elderly mother of the famous crime boss. I covered this story in a previous video. The link to this is in the comments below. Over to the Colombo crime family now, and we have a series of photos of Greg the Grim Reaper Scarpa spending time with his family. Here we see Scarpa, a feared killer who was also an active FBI informant for the best part of 30 years, with his daughter Linda. And another image with Linda, this time when she was aged 20. Two years after this photo, Linda was driving behind her father outside their house, when hitmen from Vicarina's faction of the Colombo family ambushed her father in a failed hit. At the time of the shooting, Linda had her eight-month-old son in the car. She would recall, All of a sudden, I heard popping noises that sounded like fireworks. I looked up, and there were these guys dressed from head to toe in black. Their faces were covered in black ski masks, and they were carrying these long black guns with silencers. They surrounded our cars and started shooting at my father's car. As soon as the first shots rang out, I saw my father go down. In the next photo, we see from left to right, Linda's mother, Big Linda, followed by Linda herself, then Greg Scarpa, and then Linda's brother, Joey. Joey would later be shot to death in 1995. Staying with the Colombo family, we have a couple of home photos of future Colombo family underboss, William Wild Bill Cutolo. In the following photo, Wild Bill is seen on the far right, and his son, Bill Cutolo Jr., is on the far left as they visit Santa Claus. In the next image, we see Cutolo and his daughter Dana and her mother. Like many mobsters, including Greg Scarpa, who we just mentioned, Wild Bill Cutolo had two families. 
Here is another photo, this time of a younger Wild Bill, this time sporting a moustache. William Wild Bill Cutolo was murdered in 1999. Acting family boss Ali Boy Persico and Jackie De Ross were convicted of ordering his killing. Anyway, I hope you found some of those family photos interesting. Thanks for watching.